episode four, Thinking Like a Closer. So let's recap where you're at right now. So going back to the beginning of the process, you're using your map to make a list of who you know and who you wanna know. Out of those major lists, you're pulling five to 10 people a week that we call whites. These are blank slate people that you're talking to to position your value and see if there might be an opportunity. Once someone says, yes, I think I might need your products or services, I just don't need them right now. That person is qualified as a yellow. These are golden opportunities where you have a chance to nurture the relationship, expand on your value, so that when they're ready to meet, the first person they think of is to call you. Once a person agrees to meet, that person is reclassified from a yellow to a blue. When you have a blue, you're switching from the prospector mindset to that of a technical expert. This is where you're focusing on your unique technical skills that make you a good fit for the scope of work that's being presented. In the process of working through blue meetings, you're leaving what we call good footprints and you're working toward an understanding of what will be included in a proposal for services or a detailed salary and benefit package. The moment that your blue says to you would like to discuss a salary range or would like a proposal for services from you, that blue immediately reclassifies as a red because they are red hot and you have just transitioned from the mindset of a technical expert to that of a closer. That change of mindset is one that focuses on how do we get this deal closed? How do we come to an understanding with one another that it's a good fit? And how do I ask for this opportunity? No matter if you're an entrepreneur, a contract worker, or an employee, everyone needs to understand how to think and act like a closer. How to think like a closer. Let me give you an example of my friend Ruth. She was at her fourth interview at a large accounting firm. It was all going very smoothly. Then one of the senior partners asked her, what would it take for you to join our team? At that moment, she kind of flushed and turned red and shyly asked for a salary range and mentioned that she knew he was talking to several other candidates. She started him hawing around and I asked her, I said, Ruth, does this make you feel like a closer, the way you're trying to get to an understanding with him? And she said, no, you know, I actually came across as someone who seemed very unsure of myself. She said, what would you have done differently? And I told her, I would have said, you know, I am so excited to hear this. After visiting with your team, I feel your team is a great fit for me. I genuinely like them and I could see myself fitting in and adding measurable value here, doing what, the work that you need to have done. Also, my salary range is X to X amount, depending upon the benefit package. Would this work for you? If appropriate, I'd like to talk about my 30, 60, 90 day plan in advance of a start date so that I can prepare to onboard quickly and I'd like to hit the ground running. Maybe that would be a good next step for us. Does this make sense to you? Should I meet with someone else in advance of this meeting? I want you to know I'm available to you and I look forward to working with HR to get the paperwork done. Now that would have been a perfect and ideal way for her to be confident, express her interest and move forward asking for a closing opportunity. So thinking about your reds, I want you to be thinking about what is your closing strategy? What kind of things do you need to practice in advance so that you have confidence to ask for the opportunity when the opportunity is presented to you? I encourage you to practice those things mindfully with your small group. What are your priorities and where can you improve? Do you need to improve on your footprints? Which documents in particular could use benefit of some polish? Is it your bio? Is it your case studies? Is it your value, value proposition? What is it? And looking back, how could you improve on your responsiveness? Maybe the quality of your emails or your physical presentations. How about your human brand or the things, again, that I remind you, you can control your X factors. I would love for you to identify a short list of things that you can improve on and prioritize those with your small groups. I also encourage you to get brutal about your human brand, okay? Go to somebody dressed like you would for an interview and ask them what their thoughts are on your hair, on your, pres your presentation of yourself physically. 
The smallest things make a big difference, and this is gonna sound strange, but I'm gonna give you a few examples. One woman came to our small group. She was in her 50s, late 50s, and was looking for a job as a COO. Now, everything about this woman was absolutely wonderful. She was beautiful. She had these startling blue eyes, and she was a very attractive woman. However, she was wearing her hair like she was 16 years old. She had really thinning, long, straight, kind of scraggly blonde hair that was extremely greasy. And this detracted from the otherwise beautiful woman sitting in front of me. Had she decided to update her hairdo, she would have been so much more appreciated, I believe, as a candidate. It was a small thing, but it was a big thing that she needed to improve on in her physical appearance. Another woman who came to our group often would come in and would be eating at group meeting with us. She would bring in like chili cheese dogs and things like this into our small group session, which I've got to be honest with you, the minute you bring a chili cheese dog into a group of small people, either they're really hungry or they're really disgusted by the smell and odor being put off by that thing. And the unfortunate thing was as she would eat this food, it would often get all over the front of her clothes. So simple things like, are your clothes clean? Do you smell good? Do you have good hygiene? These are things that you, you need to look into. Also, do you wear too much perfume if you're a woman? Could you go lighter on makeup? Could you be wearing less loud accessories? Sometimes women have a tendency to put on a lot of dangly things that make a lot of noise. All of these things can distract from your human brand. If you need a special chapter on the human brand, I encourage you to download our worksheet. It's a free bonus and it's on the Economy of One website. This can help you dramatically improve your human brand. In module seven, we have numbers of examples of well-written addendums, well-written value propositions, well-written bios. All of these things could be helpful to you if you want to download those, uh, that worksheet and those workbook chapters. Finally, we're going to get into episode five, how to prepare for interviews if you're a recent graduate. This is a bonus episode.